welcome Good. to my youtube channel merchant with decoded first of all people who do not know sir is uh, martin craft sir person who inspired me initially when i went for a fednav seminar sir is a vice president fleet management fednav it's a big 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 thing those people who do not know and people are working with angular especially fednav ships would know him very well because he comes yearly once for the seminars where he makes those great 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 interactive speeches so sir coming to the point sir i my first question to you is i would love to know about your initial family background your initial days of your life a childhood how was it like well first of all prani thank you very much for having me because i really do believe that your work matters very much and then i i must say that what i've seen from you you're creating a buzz here and i think shipping needs that uh, imminently and it's important that we have people like you who do these things so first of all thank you thank very you. much for that thank you sir jamal and uh, maybe that that takes us right into who i am because i you know i grew up in in a, a city in the middle of germany i don't have any seafaring background anywhere in the family and when i grew up um there there was no internet there was no email right so so when you wanted to explore something you had to really go to libraries and get books and find somebody um so so i grew up in the middle of germany and i had my awake a uh, normal boy you know thinking about everything and nothing uh, so today i feel myself i'm reflected in my own son who's now 11 years old who uh, you know goes through life happy go lucky not like his 14 year old sister who is very determined and very focused and she has a very clear vision of what she wants to achieve so i was more like my son tooling around in life and then i had my awakening at 14 when i decided the best profession in life the career i want to aspire i want four stripes on my shoulder i want to be a ship's captain oh so you want to do a ship's captain very initial so today around thousands of seafarers in india i am mentoring right now through my videos through my online yeah. content and they are all like they want to become a captain hardly people want to become chief engineer and and what was that one thing that attracted you towards becoming a captain if i ask you during the initial days um actually my awakening came um when i was 14 years old and uh, i was sent to an english uh, sea school you know a sailing school where where uh, traditional seamanship was taught to to uh, young kids and for the first time when i compare this before 14 year old martin with the after 14 year old martin uh, the before 14 year old martin was tooling around and happy go lucky and then suddenly through seamanship i found structure i found responsibility i found people trusted me that i would have the night watch you know we were 14 15 16 year old boys and we were sailing uh, across the english channel in in dense conditions dense fog and and severe weather um so for the first time ever i experienced immediate action and reaction the wind and the waves are unforgiving if you don't do it right then uh, you'll see it immediately and that for the first time this combination of action equates to reaction and this uh, sense of trust other people trusting me that was my awakening and i thought what better way of applying this than becoming a ship's captain great sir who was your childhood hero at that time matlab at the age of 14 when you were transitioning towards becoming a man that you thought of who was a childhood hero that time actually i think my childhood hero was larry bird of the boston celtics bas- uh, basketball um and why because he was he was sort of the, the weird one out he was a fun guy i remember i had a um a picture of him a poster of him in my my boys childhood room and he was the weird one out he was funny he he stood out with his physique and his appearance and it's funny i never thought about it so pranit i already uh, got some benefit in return from being on your show here today because i never reflected on him but he was would have been my childhood hero okay great so you matlab you have been a surprise for me i'll tell you why you started as a ship mechanic in 1994 then you became yeah. a sailor you sailed for 5 years as a seaman as a os as a eb as a boson you know so this video is going to inspire so many people out there matlab i i i just recently made a video with an oiler who is becoming a junior engineer right now so i want Perfect. to know your journey i want to know your journey like this is going to inspire so many others matlab 
normally a gentleman thinks if he's an oiler he will think okay i want to become a chief here some day but thinking of becoming a vice president mm. of a shipping company at such a good level will be something unimaginable so your journey is important sir so how come just tell me sir how was your journey starting as a ship mechanic and then on well maybe uh, to get started um i truly believe shipping has been certainly for me and for many others which i see it has been a journey which took people beyond their wildest dreams right it is a, an amazing profession because it brings a lot of things together it brings people together so you you develop and you hone people skills working with and through people you become self reliant self sustainable because on the ship you cannot call the the uh, the service uh, engineer in you are at sea and you have got 21 19 how am i ever many people you are on board uh, you have to solve it both psychologically personally leadership wise and technically right so uh, i think this is what what shipping brings and shipping is a career which can take you beyond your wildest dreams um to to come back uh, when my journey started i mean it was not that uncommon in germany uh, ship mechanic was one of the the typical routes which you could take to get your time before the mast where you uh, got your really sail experience and for me why it was important for me to choose this route and not go through cadet ship was i wanted to really learn and understand so for that i think you need to to know a little bit more about my family context um so so i'm the first in my family who who saw university uh, from from nearby and it was my mother who always invested in me in 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 education she taught me the beauty of of reading and studying and actually to 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 a large degree i think i am impersonating my mother's dreams um so so i come from from very humble beginnings uh and my my grandfather used to be uh, working in mines so so he was a miner in the central german area my father was a ships mechanic so you know i i don't come from academic background um but i always longed for that So but for me it was a natural uh, continuation of my childhood journey that I thought okay I need to learn it from the bottom up at the same time I wanted to earn my own money right I didn't want when I was 18 years old I didn't want to be on my parents pocket anymore so and the best way for me to to combine all these three things learning it from the basics being self sustained and uh, ha- fulfilling this basic requirement to to then aspire a seafaring career was for me to uh, to uh, do the apprenticeship to to become ship's mechanic and because i loved that so much being out there the camaraderie the learnings because i loved that so much i uh, continued doing uh, that on on sailing vessels so i went on on the big uh, square rig sailing vessels because uh, intentionally i could learn much more about seamanship there than anywhere else so that was so- that was the 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 my take off and my journey sir i want to resonate on one thing i so my mother expired uh, when i was just 14 and a half years old mm. and even before while she was about to die her only concern was whether her son will become something in life or not so when you are talking about your mother impersonating her dreams that she was into education that my children should become something i completely resonate with that but sir coming back again to the same point your grandfather was a miner yeah. your father was a ship mechanic your mother was into education at that time did you ever dream that your journey could be something like this ever at that time no honestly uh no i did not um so so it was already frankly speaking when i thought i want to be a ship's captain that was you know four golden stripes on your shoulder master next god uh, that was for me already then that so well i will need a lot of luck in my my life to to make it there and that would be wouldn't that be an amazing uh, goal and and uh, in life to 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 become a ship's captain one day so that was my that was my uh, true north right that was my uh, my guidance and then suddenly i realized wow i i was lucky frankly speaking because the time was just good for us uh, in 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 the early 2000s because suddenly there was this this huge boom in shipping and suddenly there were opportunities uh, so i was lucky for sure time wise but then of course i also grasped the the opportunities so i now when you're talking about luck and you said i've lucky I, i've been lucky i need to know uh, what how important is luck in one's career because the same question i asked beyon hagard sir as well so when you say today you're transpired from a ship mechanic to a 
वाइस प्रेसिडेंट सो आई वॉन्ट टू नो की वॉज इट जस्ट प्लेन लक हाउ मच लक प्लेड एन इंपॉर्टेंट रोल करियर और वर सम स्ट्रॉन्ग हार्ड वर्क एथिक्स इन वर्ल्ड इन एंड इफ देवर देन वॉट uh look for it it's 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 uh, this is not an either or in my my book this is a both and you need both frankly speaking i i know many examples in life where people are working extremely hard extremely hard but for some reason or another they they never had the the right shot at the right time and then i see people who who don't work hard but who are lucky and i also see them falter at some stage it doesn't carry you through life Honestly I think they need to marry. I think you need to marry uh hard work with luck. You cannot you cannot go over and beyond without both being present. And in Germany, is- and on top. in Germany we've got a saying is the the luck is with the deserving. So there you go. Yeah because sir, you can, you have only one thing in your hand that is hard work. Luck is not in your hands I guess. You can just keep tapping the doors on the opportunities and just keep waiting right. So one thing is in your hand you just go ahead with that mm. am i right sir but yes yes i agree uh, and that resonates a lot with me but you also need to prepare the ground right uh, you need, need to prepare the ground for luck and luck will not uh, awaken you if you lock yourself up in a room in a dark room somewhere <laughs> so uh, luck also needs the right uh, environment to 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 materialize right so and that from my perspective is definitely in our lives uh, in the careers and professions which you and I have chosen uh, it it involves many people you 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 need to, to to be out there whether you're an introvert or an extrovert we are in a people's business and and for that in order for luck to reach you luck is often impersonated by human beings right by people and uh, how do you expect luck to reach you if you're not engaged with the people same like the work which you're doing pranit right. because you're engaging now many many people around the globe you use the internet for the, that you use linkedin for that so you have paved the way for luck to 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 even reach you so i would say i'm lucky that way because i first of all gathered the courage to message you on linkedin ki i had never thought in my dreams that you'll reciprocate so that was somewhere down the down the line my initiative to message you luck paved that you saw that message and then you reciprocated back i would say and then this uh, interview is happening so both are required i agree but again yeah, i had to message I that initiative so, yeah. was important okay sir those 7 uh, years as a ship mechanic then abos what those 7 years taught you in life what were those 7 years like i think the first thing which which um really starting from from square up was humbleness and and humility uh, i think that's where i got it from that's where that journey started uh because frankly speaking uh from my upbringing when i went to high school in germany and uh, what not when you graduate with with your uh with your university entrance examination you're pretty arrogant I, no sorry 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 i was pretty arrogant at the time okay. so you know what i studied so hard i learned it all I know Latin, I know about history, I know things. And then of course I met my first boatswain. <laughs> and uh he in him I saw something where so wow, this is a man standing solidly with both feet on deck every morning when we had the roll call at six o'clock on deck. I remember him and, and actually it gives me the the goosebumps. <laughs> he be jeep is just the goosebumps just now thinking of him. Uh and I owe to him the gift that he gave me the humility. I said, "Okay, boy, I understand. But I think you've got a lot of to learn here." And and I did. And I did learn. And so so humility uh was clearly one of the things which I remember which which were a path which I had chosen back then. Um at the same time it was a love for the sea frankly Pranit. It was Yes there's work yes there's deck work there's engine room work but there's always also the opportunity of of take a look outside enjoy the the sun rising in the morning enjoy the the sun setting in the evening in the middle of the pacific enjoy when you've got your midnight to 4 o'clock watch yes it's it's tough on everything but take a minute and look at the stars how lucky are we uh, for for that who sees what we see as as mariners So that was another thing which I learned and also lastly I think it was really 
getting to know people from different cultures. So from day one, I was sailing on, on international vessels, essentially, right? So I suddenly, me growing up in, in the middle of Germany, knowing only Germans around me and from sailing a couple of English, suddenly I had people from around the globe. And that's why I started to also think, well, we are one people. It is not, it is not nations which divide us. There's something at the, the root level of, of all of us which unites us. So these are my three key takeaways from my initial sailing mm -hmm. days. So after, as a sailor, then how come this, uh, you got a shore job at Columbia Ship Management as an assistant to the MD? How did this happen, sir? Yeah. So how did that come about? Again, you know, uh, Panit, I think there was a combination of, of uh, good fortune and, and hard work. Uh, when I enrolled for, for my Master Mariners class in Hamburg, um, together with, with uh, two of my still best friends, uh, we, we joined the fraternity there, the, the, uh, the alumni association, and uh, we invested extracurricular time in there, helping really um, giving back into the sailor society. Uh, so, so in order to describe that, every two weeks this society would meet and you would sit together. So there's the people who just came back from sea, uh, who would tell their sea stories. And there was the pilots who are members uh, and our students, right? So, so we heard it from, from the, the uh, experienced practitioners. Uh, that, that's how uh, it all started. So, so, and I decided that is the environment I want to, uh, to be in. These are the people I want to re uh, surround myself with because I will learn, in addition to my academic hard work every day, I'm able to, to learn uh, on that front. It then happened that Heinrich Schöller and Carsten Sommerhage, the, the chairman of uh, Columbia Ship Management and the managing director of Columbia Ship Management, they were uh, also members of the, the uh, fraternity and um, they, they were very much looking after us. So, so uh, Carsten Sommerhage became my mentor, essentially, for that. Uh, but for, for that part of the extracurricular work. And I maintain very close relationships with him. And then, um, because curiosity then took me after I graduated from uh, the Nautical College, uh, curiosity took me to, to study law and study um, business administration. And whilst I did that, Carsten came to me and said, hey, there's an opportunity to, to come ashore here. Would you like to grasp it? And because we talked earlier about it, Panit, about how hard work and, and luck have to come together, I could at that moment, I could have easily said, uh, no, I don't know, maybe, yes. But I felt it. I felt it in my, 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 my chest, in my belly. I said, this is my opportunity. If I don't grasp that now, uh, I, this will be a missed opportunity, which I regret. So I jumped at it on that evening, actually. That's how sure. that came about. Now, sir, when you are talking about luck and I guess you're giving luck a lot of importance. But when I see this journey, I see that you were highly curious about learning new things. You wanted to go ahead in life. You were really hungry to move ahead. Hmm. You were doing a business administration course. You were in different courses. You showed to people that you had some caliber. Otherwise, the person that you're talking about would have never come to you unless until he had seen that potential in you. So that was some hard work. Sheer hard work, dedication that could show the world that what potential you have. Luck was a part that was they needed someone and you were present at that time. So I think so ki over here the strong worth is over the years that played a big important role. Yeah, and, and uh, absolutely. So let me not sugarcoat it. Yes, I mean, what, what I'm describing both in study times as well as then when I worked, I mean, these are, I'm, I'm talking about 14 hours a day choices, right? Uh, working. So, so when I studied that, there was time which was all on top, right? So, and I made my choices also when I studied for, for the MBA part. I mean, for two years, I knew because that was on top of my, my day job. I would have to cut on, on uh, relationships. I couldn't go out uh, drinking and to the bars and to restaurants. I was 100% dedicated for two years. And there was a, there was a, a prudent call, which I made at the time. And maybe that's a thing. Uh, thanks for, for, for reminding me of that, Pranit. Because one of the other key principles which I abide by is it takes me sometimes a long time to take a decision. But once I've come to, the, and why is that? Because I want you to normally take the best possible decision in the context of, of uh, what I know. But once I've taken the decision, 
prudently with all upsides and downsides. So I go through a very rigorous process of that. I'm all in, right? I play full on. I don't diddle daddle uh, around. So, and that's why I say, so, so yes, that was 14 hour days every day, seven days a week for seven two years. Um, so, so you were just 16 hours short of what Elon Musk is 100 hours a week. So you were doing 84 hours, approximately 84 to 85 hours per week. That was sheer hard work, dedication coming. No Saturdays, no Sundays, no Monday blues, nothing. It was just, let's just focus, right, sir? Well, it's dedicated. I mean, I don't hope there's many parallels between Elon Musk and me. But if, that is, <laughs> if I'm getting close to that, uh, that's, that's okay. Yeah, it, it, and that's why I always say uh, it's hard work and, and luck. They have to come together. You cannot substitute one by the other. It will come back to haunt you. Either you will, people will see that just by hard luck, just because your family, your father, your relationships have brought you somewhere where you've outgrown yourself. This will show people have an understanding what is authentic. And I truly believe in this new awakening of the world. It will just take you so far and then you will slide off. Same time. Uh, so, so that's if you only have luck. Same time. If you only have hard work, but you don't prepare the ground for luck. It will never, you will never break through the ceiling, right? So you really do need both. Both, both, both. So you need to keep looking for both the options, opportunities, everything. So, sir, that was Columbia Ship Management, where you started as an assistant to ship, uh, assistant to MD. And then you rose to a rank of becoming a commercial director. That was a good. How come FedNav came into the picture and you joined FedNav? Now we need to know the next part. Um, so, so now, uh, if I may take you, so, so this 2014, right? 2014 in Germany, uh, the end, uh, what we thought the end of, of the, the big shipping crisis from the credit crunch. So, uh, at Columbia Ship Management, we, our business in Germany was, was mainly about the KGs. So the, 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 uh, the funds which, which invested into ships, right? And that was really in dire straits. At that time, uh, I was approaching 40 years of age. And I spent more time at the local court, uh, yeah. avoiding the next insolvency for, for a single purpose vehicle, right? So that was not very inspiring. I had two beautiful kids and life was good otherwise, but I again spent these crazy long hours at work and I did all this work, which was sort of just avoiding bigger damage. And I did not get inspired from that. So I thought, oh, mm, that's not great. And then again, now I think, so that was hard work. And then luck came. So somebody called me and said, you know what, uh, I heard about this and that job. Are you interested? I said, no, 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 I'm not. So then that person insisted. So what would you be interested in? I thought, well, I never thought about it, but you know what? It has to be something where a company vision, the role and the environment for the family. These three things have to come together. So I want to be able to, to, to bring my, to, to accommodate my entire family. I want to, to be able to grow in that role. And I want to be in sync with the company's values. And I said, I'll call you back tomorrow. <laughs> and okay. to the next day, I received a phone call saying, look, there's this company in Canada, FedNav. I said, never heard of them. Okay. Uh, but this was on the, on the 26th of January, 2014. And it was rainy and gray and cold in Germany. So I come home and tell my wife, you know, there was a company calling me today. And I said, they're out of uh, uh, Canada. Can you believe it? Look out of the window. The weather is totally terrible. I, I've, I'm not going to waste any time to think about it. And then I think this is again luck coming in. <laughs> so my wife then Googled. I thought, hey, did you ever think about Montreal? Montreal, Quebec, it doesn't seem bad. It seems to be a pretty cool place. I said, yeah, but you know what? Look out the window. It's, it's still terrible weather, is it? Call them back. Well, okay. Well, you do what your wife tells you, right? So, so I, <laughs> right. Okay, so, okay, so, right. Let's, 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 uh, let's talk about it. And then we talked about it. And then one thing led to another. Um, it was just a perfect fit. I found all three things here. I found an amazing company with family values behind it from the owning family in the third generation. I found a role which I clearly saw it has potential. And I saw a beautiful place where I would feel comfortable to bring my young kids and my wife. Sir, uh, I would, I, I completely resonate with you, sir. I've done two shifts with FedNav, sir. And the environment has been so good, especially from the owner's end, along with, of course, Anglican management as well, that the facilities provided at FedNav, I won't compare, but I would say they were the best in all the owners that they have got aligned with them. 
so even i know a lot of my friends those who feel proud say i'm we are sailing on fed nav ships and all so i sailed on two of them and i had some fabulous time sir so you are working at the right place and i congratulate you for that and even i have been a part of that team sir okay sir so my next question yeah, is funny 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 if i can just say i think and and this is something we, which i think is important for for the people which which you are inspiring through your webcast and that is um what is the ultimate thing here the ultimate thing is i hear often from from you during the seminar when we met and from others in the seminar oh thank you thank you for this and that i can only do what i can do because i've got a family standing behind it who's 100% uh, on board so if if i any decisions which i'm taking on behalf of of the sea first to make sure that we've got the best possible assets uh, but that we also uh, engage our sea first in a humane accommodating and positive fashion it is because it is resonated 100% and rooted and anchored in the family's values and this is what makes for me a difference between this kind of company which is here for the long haul it's a third generation uh, management now and they are here to make a difference in the world and that is beyond just the profitability right and this is why i think for every one of 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 the people you are inspiring franit it's always to to keep a look out do you want to to be happy in the long run or are you just looking for the opportunity in the short run and i think this is why fatnaf is an amazing company it is because of the amazing family which stands behind this company sir i have a very good question because i am into becoming an entrepreneur and when i see myself i want to build something which lasts longer than me that is my vision whatever it is in future so now you have been working with a company which has last three generations i would say so what is the most important thing that as an as an entrepreneur i need to understand or do so that i build something which is which lasts longer than me in your opinion well i think it starts with a business right a business is the business to do business so it doesn't uh, you cannot run a business on on a bad idea right so so if you have an idea of a service or product which nobody needs and wants and requires well that won't fly um but then once you have something where you know that that is needed uh, and and desired by people who are willing to to pay for it i think then comes in how do you do, so so this is what you do and maybe one step before I think following the normal thing why you do it so I think you would do your soul searching why will Pranit do what Pranit does which only Pranit and few others can do this is your why right so so that's your purpose that's your calling then your what what is it that you are you are selling to someone who, for which somebody is willing to uh, to to uh, pay a price and then we come automatically into the how so how are you doing it and I think in the how you do it there's there's i'm i'm a, i'm a deep believer in values right so i do believe companies and individuals need to have a character and that character is made up by the behaviors and the uh, the ways how you conduct yourself so i think you want to be very clear and concise in 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 your values that this is what i'm willing to 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 do and how i'm willing to do it everything which is out of scope stays out of scope um but in addition to that then i think you need to remain agile because we we're, we're living in such a fast paced world right we cannot buy uh, i don't think panit you can build a business today which is a fantastic idea today even the what right you you've got here something for which somebody is willing to pay you don't know whether in 10 years that's still the case so i think today an entrepreneur like you will continuously reinvent uh what you're offering but ideally you're just reconsidering what you're offering you're not uh, reconsidering why you're offering and you're not co- reconsidering how you're oh, uh, yes. behaving yourself so i think in your what that needs to be uh, the agility okay great sir so now comes uh, the a very important question that is today you are vice president fleet management fedner what is your a normal day like or say on a wednesday not on a friday or on a monday but a normal wednesday like 
So Wednesday is a special day. So so uh, let us kick off with the Wednesday because that's a good thing. So frankly speaking, uh, the day starts. I open my eyes and I grab my mobile phone and I look at WhatsApp. I, that's seriously, and I know that's not a great habit. And See. actually, I'm currently experimenting with it. Same to to um, yeah. It's it's and for, but for me this is a bad habit. Why I've elected that it is a bad habit for me because it fills my day already with something. But I think it's an addiction which I want to let go currently. Why why is it WhatsApp? Because WhatsApp is is our medium between my team uh, and and our ship managers and and us when when there's something which needs urgent attention, uh, which draws my attention to it. But why do I want to let go of it? Because I. I always used to think that where I should spend my time is the urgent and important, right? Urgent and important. But only recently, I'm talking the last two months, I came to realize if I do this, I always stay in emergency and crisis response mode because it, it, important and urgent are crises. This is, thank God, doesn't really happen. Ship on fire, cargo damaged, uh, main engine doesn't start. That's urgent and important, right? Because that's what we do in, in my reality, in my business. So, and normally WhatsApp drags me right into this weeds. What I want to work much more on is important, but not urgent. What do I need to do for that? I need to empower my team to deal with every eventuality they can deal with. So this is one of my big moves is, I, because I cannot get rid of my WhatsApp addiction as long as I don't have somebody taking it over. So my team is normally uh, really heavily involved in the um, urgent and important to coordinate with the ship, ship manager what to do about it, giving me the freedom of mind and sp space and, and uh, head that I look at important but not yet urgent. Because through that, I'm focusing How do I build the new future? What is uh, therefore a, st a strategy? What do I need to do to, to uh, empower my team further? So, but you asked me what this, this is still how my day starts. And I hope if we do this interview again in a year, I will not talk about WhatsApp. Uh, next round is then also a quick uh, glance through, through uh, business emails. Five minutes normally. I get up, work out. I, I try to work out every morning, half an hour workout. I need that to, to get my, 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 You know, my, my body started. So that's physical wellness. And then I spend half an hour every morning reading. Um, so, so this is for me sharpening the saw. This is, uh, if, you, if you know that expression from, from Stephen Covey, I, I invest one hour every morning in sharpening my saw. So physically and intellectually. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm quite rigid with it. And then I normally show up in the office at any time between eight and nine. Uh, work through through then important stuff which is not yet urgent 11:30 every day i've got my check in with my team so we've got a daily team huddle because this is again where 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 um where business meets personality and we um we normally talk through uh well business matters of course but it's always from a perspective okay this is what's happening this is what's going on in the business this is the help i need from you What resources do we need to rope in? This is what we call alignment. And this team huddle is normally half an hour. On Wednesdays, it's more special because Wednesdays, we also rope in colleagues from our uh, Barbados office and from our uh, in our um, um, business relations uh, department. So through that, we then have full alignment for the week between everything that's going on, everything that's cooking, and what drives the, the individuals who are doing it. So that's that. Then Wednesdays, I always have two one-on-ones. And that's important to, to mention because every day of the week, I have a team one-on-one -on -one because I want for everyone who is directly reporting into me, give them at least half an hour every week, one-on-one -on -one time with me, which is again, what roadblocks do I need to, to move out of your way? What can I do to, to, to uh, let you grow further? What is keeping you awake at night? Hopefully nothing. And what else do I need to do uh, to, to support you? And that then carries me into the evening. Uh, uh, on Wednesday evenings, we've got our weekly alignment call, one hour with our ship managers in, in Hong Kong. So we dedicate again, same principle. We dedicate one hour where there's 20 minutes, which is uh, rotating. It could be, uh, and we've got a schedule for that. It's IT, it's it's uh, purchasing, or it's uh, marine personnel. 
And then we've got 40 minutes alignment on big topic items where we go through a priority list, what's going on, what, and it's always about context. I'm, I'm a big believer in giving people context. I'm, I'm a big believer in hiring the right people, giving the right people context of what the mission accomplishment is uh, to do, and then let them do what they're really good at for what you hired them. So this was my Wednesday. So it, it, I woke up at six o'clock. I go to bed at 10. So I have a lot of questions coming up because I have, I'm struggling with a lot of stuff right now. I am struggling hiring the right people. I'm struggling with how do you take out time on a Wednesday? Like talk, how many people do you talk to from your team, like giving half an hour individual? Because even I try to do that. Because when you talk to people whom you are uh, mentoring or who are working with you, they feel uh, that we are a part of a family, not just a team. And that elevates their potential, their everything. So, but uh, first of all, how do you hire the right people now? And next question is this. Because this is one of the most important tasks for anyone. Yeah, that's and that is, of course, and I think that is really key. I think you, you nailed it right there, Paneet. This is at the very core of any business. How do you hire the right people? I think it's, it's again, <laughs> maybe it, it, it's again a combination of luck and hard work. <laughs> uh, intuition um, you need. I agree, sir. You need some intuition out here. Within just five minutes or 10 minutes, half an hour, you cannot say, okay, this is the package and I hire you. It's just, you have to, sometimes it clicks, sometimes it doesn't. Let's get started with the hard work. So, so I'm a true believer of two things. First of all, that you need uh, metrics, so you need data. And where do you get the data from? Data comes from psychometric testing, as far as I'm concerned. So you want to help the people uh, see their natural behavior. Psychometric testing, in the way I am accustomed to it since the early 2000s, is that you understand your, your natural style. And I, I don't want to take away the responsibility of an individual. So each one of us, due to our upbringing, our culture, our experiences, our childhood, we've got natural styles which we resort to. But these are not more than natural styles. Uh, but if you're on, uh, if you're an autopilot and and you don't think this is what you resort to in a normal situation where you're calm, in a stressful situation, and in in any other situation. So I'm a big believer in in uh, psychometric testing to get data but this data is not to give you power over the person it just instills the right conversation with them so if i've got somebody who's got an extremely high dominance and an extremely high compliance i need to steer that conversation into to finding out give me examples where you saw that in a situation where you got stressed how did you work through it and now i see is that person a team player or does he do it on himself does he only want to he or she only want to comply and sacrifice everything else on the way like relationships or other values so data is is key to, to hiring people i think what else is key is is um to to not only have one person look at them i realize that every single time that we are all working on our own map of realities we only see what we we can see so i'm a strong believer rope in many people into a conversation uh, for, for a hiring process because I need, I'm for sure I know for myself, I need somebody to uncover my blind spots, things which I haven't seen, things which didn't resonate with me. And also to prevent me from hiring just people who resonate naturally with me, who are like me. I don't want people who are like me. I need diversity of the team. I need people who, who see things which I don't see. I need people who uh, uh, can do things which I cannot do. And this is diversity. And this is a stretch, I think, uh, Pranit, because it doesn't go easy. Because we always sort of resort to, to similarity, people who are like us, and I want diversity. And so, so I think, again, this is the hard work part of it. And again, I, as you had mentioned, I think you, you need to dedicate time and resources to doing that. And I've seen this. One thing which shocks me, and I maybe you've got some insights there to help me, um, I see that in Singapore these days. I see it everywhere. In Singapore, if you hire somebody for every open position, uh, sorry, every candidate has like three open positions immediately. So, so, um, and, and I know that companies, they jump at it, they throw the package, they overbid each other, and then they hire the person. I mean, what value do you, do you create with that? Sir, so, to be very honest, uh, I am struggling right now with all these tests. 
uh, I feel that for me, what I have seen is if you have when you do this, when relationships are just meant on packages, that is not a long lasting thing. I personally believe that. I am a hard yeah. believer. Yeah. If you want to believe uh, build something which lasts longer than you, you have to have those in house trainings. And I'll share an example, sir. Recently, mm-hmm. I went to a restaurant in Dehradun where we were having very good food, and this is a well known restaurant in Dehradun. It's called Tirupati. It's make fantastic vegetarian food. So I asked them, "Ki bhai, the owner is staying in Canada right now, and he does not come over. He comes here for once a month, or maybe sometimes once in six months." And it's running very good. All the reviews are good. I told them, like, how is this happening? So he told sir, we have got our own in-house trainer. Yeah, yeah. The person who joins us as a trainee uh, cleaner, he slowly, slowly becomes a cook over there, and he imbibes our values. And that's a long-term strategy, sir. This is what I feel, and I'm a strong believer in that. I personally believe that if I really want to build mm-hmm. something built. I have to start with young people who are like minded or really to work hard maybe today do not they do not know much they do not know much about websites but they they have the right attitude they learn it fast and they'll be loyal with me as yeah. well if yeah. i take care of them if yeah. i take their care that is what i believe to to stay on that thought which you just brought up maybe that is the key that hiring does take time hiring is not transactional Hiring is not a, a working contract with a signature on the bottom of no, it. No, sir. No. Hiring is bringing human beings together on a purpose. Maybe, and maybe the 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 unwanted truth is this just takes time. It just takes time, sir. I read uh, in I read a book. I'm doing. I'm having. I'm. I've just recently started buying a lot of books. That I'm not reading dedicated like you. This is one habit that I would like to buy from you. But I read somewhere there was a. Uh, 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 there was uh, it would be a random, but but there was a sailor who went in extreme climates in the Arctic or the Antarctic Circle, and they were these people when they went there, they survived in the severest of severest conditions, and they could not eat for so many days, but still they survived and managed to come back. So when that success story was seen, so they realized that what was the reason? So the article for hiring that was given in newspaper was, we need people who are survivors. people who can struggle you might not get salary you might not come back you might not come back alive if still you want to come join no salaries no transactions you might not come back alive still those people joined that means they were really uh, had a purpose and that is why sir that uh-huh. team became successful matlab this is what i learned i'm trying to do that but sir I- i'm not being able to do that i'll be very honest sir still struggling <laughs> So, so what is missing what is missing uh, the missing did you identify is, something yes yeah, sir see if i see first of all see sir i lack vision i feel personally that i am still uh, i am not ready to take that big a risk that i can take sometimes i find right people but when i find right people mm-hmm. they, those, mm-hmm. those people really want uh, a lot of money now at this stage of time i am not being able to afford that kind of risks So now what I'm doing is I'm hiring young people whom I feel that I can mentor and I can take care of them. So luckily I am finding those right people at the right time and I'm mentoring them. And I believe these are the young people those who can learn website, they can learn video editing, they can become tomorrow face of Merchant Navy Decoded YouTube channel. And now my job will be to take care of them. That's it. And loyalty yeah. will stay. Yeah. Their efforts and they learn and grow yeah. with me. That that is the thing that I'm working on right now. and i mean maybe just uh, to to offer that thought um the story which we which you mentioned that is uh, shackleton his famous uh, voyage and the one piece which which was of course there which inspired all those misfits to do that voyage was this this fame the opportunity so the stakes were high right they knew they they might starve they might die they might freeze they might uh, not return home right but they all he attracted the the those people who then became that that uh, solidly uh, interwoven team because he he reached out and he was maybe it's also because he was honest up front right he was honest. honest with them look i don't i don't sugarcoat it on on the top and then once you dive into it you realize how bad it is no he was honest from the get go right i said look i've got very little to offer you if you still want to come come here and here's my vision to you we may discover the world and maybe to translate it into pranit's word maybe that's uh, that's your calling maybe that's your why maybe that's yes. your vision which you could have maybe this is my moment of truth sir and i take that 
but i have to go ahead with a uh, other questions to you and sir that is sir i see your sipper and that has got harvard business school written over there so now you have done you have been to harvard business school twice you have done a high potential leadership program and you have also done a general management program over there you have studied kellogg's executive education you have done mm. law you have been to law school and you have studied a hell lot i could see in your linkedin profile so many things that i could not transpire to ans uh, to mention all those things now i want to know so which part of your life in terms of education has been the turning point of your life one and you have to mention only one i know it's not easy but still you have to think over it um yeah i don't have to think too long um i uh, yes as you described there were many amazing things but yes the the pinnacle of my life was the general management program at harvard to become a harvard alum was a turning point in my life why why would i say that i mean every every little bit of my education was amazing but that one was the most amazing so first of all this was when when suddenly my 14 hour days became 19 hour days because that's how much uh, we worked there during the the program uh, with reading case studies which was of course part of it right because you really you're pushed over your boundaries to see where your boundaries are so that was a uh, amazing thing but that's not even that amazing the amazing thing is i went to harvard and that was a 15 year journey for me to get there for 15 years i worked towards it uh, a friend of mine uh, eric von levonius he went to, to harvard in 2005 and i just wanted it so much since then and every year i looked at my strategy how do i get there how do i get there how do i get there? 2020 i got there 2020 i got there because i thought this would put my already amazing uh, career which took me beyond my wildest dreams i thought that would uh, put it on steroids and it would even skyrocket even further but but the miracle happened while i was there i suddenly got an overdose of humility and humbleness suddenly i'm in the room with 120 of the brightest students of around the globe from every corner of of the globe dedicated and sent there by their companies or coming on their own terms being accepted in harvard business school so i i found this sudden wow i'm calm i've never honestly the 20 years before i've never been as calm as i've been in in the lecture uh, hall of of harvard business school and then i came back really a transformed person you, when you talk about clinical. when you talk about transformation sir uh, what kind of matlab what trans matlab what happened before harvard and after harvard because transformation is a big world so i need to know that uh, it happened at harvard it happened at harvard not not before okay. not after what happened at harvard was I I uh, I was confronted with my deepest fears. Um okay. so That part works. of because it is a trans it is a part it is a transformative uh, um program right so it, it is really decomposing you it is intentionally and yes we read it all when we went there but nobody understood what they actually do with us so uh, you're confronted with failure and I fell failed terribly on two consecutive days and uh, as i realized there was intentional but throughout the program you are you are uh, supported by coaching and coaches who are there to to support you and help you and and have candid open conversations your thinking partner and you so in my case this was being com- so uh, i'm a high achiever right from from the get go there's no i always wanted to to sky is the limit so there's one thing with which i'm afraid of and that is not belonging and not delivering okay and on the two failure scenarios which i described to you i had both very hard i i failed i didn't deliver and and i let my people down and this was my moment of truth that was my reckoning when i was really standing there essentially naked proverbially and thinking okay now it's only me who do i want to be and uh, one of the key elements which then helped me was that my coach said to me look you are who you are for everything the journey which you've been on up to here there's nothing in your life there's nothing in your life which you cannot unlearn so if you decide and you've got the capacity and if you decide you want to redo things start like peeling an onion one layer at a time take them off and and I'm here to support and help you that was my transformation great sir great i hope i, I won't say anything right now keeping my fingers crossed let's see so now i have got some past questions coming up 
so you just have to give your answers tick tick yeah. tick 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 okay sir so my first question is what is that one thing that you like about your job uh the people with who i work the people what all mistakes have you made as a leader which you regret today you made in the past well i hired people and not only told them uh what i wanted to achieve but also how to do it so telling people hiring great staff and telling them how to get the job done <laughs> terrible mistake i guess sir every every leader at some point or other that does that because of his, because of his own insecurities and uh, i do that all the time sir i'm doing that all the time which is bad what is that one most important but quality hope, you but there's hope panit i tell you there's hope <laughs> that's hope there is hope. hope yeah definitely there, there is hope so there is hope and so that is why it is very important for people like me who have just started to meet meet people like you because then the hope becomes bigger ki yaar there is some scope that i can do something in life i just have to keep growing and keep working hard towards my goal so my next question to you is what is that one most important quality you feel a leader needs to have one quality uh, in in my uh, eyes is really humility Humility. Uh, humility, uh, being able to listen, being being able to listen. Let me choose listen. being able to listen is important. And real, no, no, sorry, scratch, scratch, receiving, receiving, because receiving is more important than listening. Receiving. No, no, now you have to clear me, sir. You have to tell me what does receiving mean? Because all these years I am hearing this word for the first time. All I know is you have to be a good listener, like I told initially, sir. I want to become a good listener. I am not one. So what does receiving mean? <laughs> So listening means uh, listening has different dimensions, right? You can listen with your ears, which is just for factual information. So you know now that an apple costs one dollar ninety nine. Okay, fair enough. You can listen with with your your heart, which opens up and says, "Hey, I see what the the other person is perceiving." And there's uh, listening with your brain, where you show that vulnerability and you open up and and you really, you know, you, you open your chest up uh, to to that. When I talk about receiving, it is more than just listening. You know, we hear these active listening and listen actively, which I think is a technique. Um, so it doesn't resonate very well with me. Receiving is really like a receiver. You take it all in. You take it all in, and you may catch and let go, or you may uh, do anything with that. But you bring it all in. The verbal, the non-verbal, bring the whole person in. That is, from my perspective, receiving. Now, this help? is one word. It 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 has not helped, but it has uh, resonated with me, sir. If I put it in my words, receiving means you need to have empathy. If I put it, I, I do not know whether I am right or not. Sometimes listening means okay, somebody is telling you something. Okay, okay, just for the sake of being a leader or something, you do it. Okay, I have to become a good listener. Let him say something. Mm. I do not know how empathetic I am towards that person. How uh, how. Uh, maybe i am i ready to show my vulnerabilities how ready am i to become a part of his vulnerabilities maybe that is a part of receiving sir becoming a part of his inner circle at that yes, particular time yes for sure for sure something like that so i got your point sir i got your point so now i have to become a good receiver not a good listener <laughs> i would put it this way so again uh, this you was not to you don't have to pranit <laughs> but you, you don't have to but you can elect to do that If yes. you want to. <laughs> I have to, sir. I have to. I don't want to. I have to. I don't have any other choice, sir. I now. How many people are working with you right now in your team? With you? Well, my di- my my direct team is uh, five people, but then of course we are looking uh, through the wider uh, scope of our um, of our ship management partners, where we've got a very direct connection. So actually, <laughs> it's a whole family. But I've got five direct reports reporting to me daily. Uh, this is where it works fine because if you have got five direct people, then you can spend half an hour a day with every person individually and give them that time. And I guess if those five people are aligned, they can take care of further five people, and that is how the pyramid is formed. So that makes sense, sir. Exactly. Asperi- exactly. <laughs> sir, I am reading a lot of leadership books these days. I am trying to gain something from there, but how much? will it transpire into good actions that time will tell so sir my next question to you is one quality that you lacked initially but you found that you really need to work upon that if you want to become a good leader you worked on it and you made yourself better at it i think it's it's the same it's it's being able to receive and humility it's it's the same 
um, because I had to learn those things. They didn't come natural to me. They didn't come natural. Okay. So, what advice you would give to these young seafarers who will who are watching this video and maybe at least even if one gets inspired, sir, I think the whole conversation point is covered well. So, what is your advice? Work hard and uh, let uh, luck in uh, when it knocks on your door. <laughs> Great. So, what advice do you have for these young chief engineers or chief engineers, captains who are working on ship right now uh, so that they can become good leaders on board ship? Um, to look, look beyond the nuts and bolts. Uh, nuts and bolts on board, having the scavenge airspace clean and uh, making sure the loop oil cooler is working. This is important, right? This is day-to-day -day stuff. But uh, you need to uh, look beyond it. Look at the, the human beings who actually deliver that job. How can you be their best mentor, their best coach, their best uh, supervisor, their best uh, manager? Uh, look into that human element. Don't forget about that. And secondly, uh, look beyond. Don't just get great at the job which you have today. Learn. You've got uh, marine superintendents, you've got vetting superintendents, you've got bunker people coming out, you've got all these interactions. Use them as coaching and learning moments. Understand their reality. So, for instance, if, if you're a young chief engineer and you're sitting for the opening meeting or the debriefing with your uh, superintendent during a visit, understand his realities. This is all about the scope. Understand what what does he need your work output for, which is then work input for him, which he needs to produce. How can you help him help himself? I think this will open your mind to where are you in the in the overall uh, mission here, and and what are you contributing? Because that will then enable you to to really reflect on what is important of my job. Very well said, very well said, sir. Because on my last ship, I was, I still feel that I, uh, throughout my sailing journey, uh, barring my first ship and my last ship, I have had some fabulous journeys where I've learned a lot, but I've grown. But on my last ship, I felt that there was some resilience in me. Whenever I used to talk to my superintendent, there was some resilience. I was not ready to understand his point of view. And that is where I think there were a lot of... Uh, uh, Ah. things going wrong out there and that is where i think we young chief engineers captains yeah. do sometimes uh, make a mistake or sometimes maybe the senior superintendents if they can put in some effort so that this can be aligned towards a common purpose i think so we can do great sir it was problem from my end i know that i was resilient i was not ready to understand the other person's point of view and i really regret that but, and, and I think that that's a great thought, Panit, and, and you have heard me say that during uh, crewing seminars, right? I truly believe, and I do believe, that uh, nobody from us, from the delegation, which I normally bring into to these crewing meetings, is smarter than anybody else. We are all equally smart. We have all different functions in an organization, but this organism, this organization has to come together as one. And only if, if one part of the organization knows what the other part is doing and how they're doing it, why they're doing it, when they're doing it, only then uh, we, we can uh, get really great in our mission. So I'm, I'm a really, really strong believer in that. And for that, you really, again, uh, to, to quote something, seek to understand before you talk, right? Seek to understand what is his reality and then only go into, and now can I share now with you my reality? Because I'm also the receiver of work inputs. Maybe some of your, your information which you feed back to me may be uh, perplexing or confusing me. Can we clarify? So I think this is what we talk about. No, sir. No, I really. And that was the reason that I told that same superintendent that whenever I go on ship, I have to go on your ship next time. And I assure you that uh, mm. I won't. I can't go with a black spot on my career. I have to go on your ship and I have to perform to the best potential of mine so that that mindset changes. So I've taken up that challenge whenever I go back on ship. It has been an agreed uh, agreement that he will take me on a ship back. Let's see how it goes this time. Uh, so. Again, uh, I my, keep fingers crossed for you, Pranit. Definitely. No, sir. This time I'm confident enough because that resilience has gone. I've learned my lesson the hard way. I can't make that same mistake again. Else I can never become a good leader. That's for sure. My next question to you is, sir. Uh, you started your journey as a ship mechanic and you transpired yourself. You worked hard towards a goal and today you are what you are. So even today I find a lot mm. of ABs, oilers, those who want to become engineers, those who want to become uh, officers on board ship. Now, sir, 
they have to go through a lot of grinding in india clearing those exams is not easy they save a lot of money they go to uk and they come from a very humble background like yours and mine they have to save that money that parental pressure everything but because of their hard work mm. determination they do that they go for these exams they clear those exams and then when they have the ticket in hand mm. and when they are looking for becoming a fourth engineer companies don't take them they say that we need people who are straight away cadets or engineers they don't take them which is really really disheartening because sir again they might not be the smartest people around they might not be very fluent with english but sir with their dedication with their hard work they have proven that they really want that job and i think so that is very important sir in the recent and this was uh, funny there was something in the recent uh, crewing seminar um, where we did a rating seminar right so so uh, again asked with with who we are in the way we're doing things we we not only hold crewing conference everybody does crewing co uh, ra um, sorry officers conference officers. right we want junior officers r uh, ratings and uh, uh, cadets we want them all right and i think i, I hope uh, with with the other leaders uh, you mentioned already bjorn jurgard and there's other great tommy olofsson and and there's many great uh, leaders in in uh, ship management companies today who i trust have awoken to it our uh, import the importance of tapping into the entire workforce so this has been a topic uh, one month ago when i was at the, our last crew okay. conference because we we do have in our uh group of people working on our fleet for a long time we have people who cleared their exams and now waiting to to, to get that job and uh, this is something which is in the focus and we will work on that we uh, because i i agree with you they are a very important part that dedication and that hard work is exactly what you and i talked about now for an hour and this needs to be honored and and taken into account and and being uh, rewarded definitely so because these people have gone through a lot of negativity when they are giving their exams there is no one to support them not their family not their friends no one they say you won't be able to do that it is not easy but against all odds they do that so i think yeah. so these are the most deserving people i believe that and thank you sir for even I if agree. you if people like you are reconsider because you are the people who can make those changes <laughs> i am just a medium in between so thank you for that so my last question yeah. to you is Uh, what are your views on autonomous ships matlab it has been a thing which has been working for so many years for the last decade or so even before that autonomous ships are going to come autonomous ships are going to come. just a view from your end on this um i i it's, it's interesting because uh, autonomous ship was the big hype before uh, covid and now with uh, decarbonization and digitalization i hear it rarely i i don't hear it so what i think autonomy and technology needs to be used uh, to support humans in their decision making in the execution of the job so i'm all for hold cleaning robots i'm all for uh, proper uh, navigation equipment which brings your ship safely from a to b i'm all for underwater drones who who help you uh, identify your hull condition etc etc so i do believe strongly in technology but this technology needs to be used in my world in my view in the forthcoming future to uh, to make uh, to to first of all take out dangerous jobs and tasks and also support human beings in taking smarter decisions than they do today uh, do i foresee that in the next uh, for see the future there will be ships without uh uh crew sailing around the globe in uh, notable numbers no i do not all these tests which i see yara birkenland and others they are good for for specific point to point small scale thing and i th see the benefit not to as a proof of concept that uh autonomous shipping is possible of course it's possible we send people to the moon right i mean we can do it does it make sense No, I do not see that uh, for the time being. But I think there will be a lot of learnings from doing that. Things to be thought, technology to be developed, and uh, systems to be integrated. Great, sir. So this has been one of the great. I thought I'll be just interviewing you, but it turned out to be an interactive session where I could also share what my experiences have been, and I guess I enjoyed it thoroughly. I really loved it. It was not an interview at all. It was just a. interactive session where two people are learning from each other i am absorbing more i would say but it was really great sir so my moment of truth from this session has been sir uh, becoming a receiver not a good listener i am taking this point from this session for sure
thank you. Yeah, and it's it's a co-creation, right? I mean, I enjoyed it uh, tremendously as well because don't ever underestimate the the, um, uh, the the power of a conversation, right? Because now you gave me a homework as well, so I'll be thinking about who's my role model. <laughs> so it's always it's always give and take, right? And sometimes we may we may be too shy to accept it but i learned a lot today so thanks a lot panit for today thank really you sir jamadari thank you sir jamadari thank you very much sir. thanks a lot